After months of being away traveling for car shows and auctions back and forth across the country, I'm finally home to finish up the second rebuild of my early 2000s Lotus Elise. Now, I'm on rebuild number two that we started in December here, but when I originally bought the car for $18,000, that's right, this car right behind me, my 2005 Lotus Elise, I purchased it for $18,000 in about November of 2022 with the rebuilt title and a wrecked front end. I had started to do a little bit of content at the time, but because so much time has passed, I never really got to tell the full story of how this car came to be in my possession and what the rebuild process was originally like and how we ended up where we are today. So here is my origin story for my Lotus Elise. Lotus Elise was my dream car since I was a child, but obviously not being able to afford one straight out of college, I bought a Toyota MR2 Spider, and it was that very car that I was welding in the garage when my husband came out to me to tell me that he found one of the cheapest Lotus Elises on the market, and he found this one for $18,000. If you're interested in finding a wrecked lease, we actually find most of ours on Facebook Marketplace, and there are several groups just for buying and selling wrecked exotic cars. You'll find this is where a lot of YouTubers get their content. But there are a lot of perils that come with buying and selling wrecked exotic cars, and we found out almost every single one of these when it came to this car. So. We knew that the front end of the car was wrecked and going to need a lot of repair, but besides that, it came with a polycarbonate windshield that was so warped, I ended up not being able to drive the car for the first three months that I owned it because I couldn't see out of the windshield. Now, luckily, my friends down at Wirewheel in Vero Beach, they specialize in restoring Lotuses, rebuilding Lotuses, and they were able to source me a windshield. It did cost several grand, which luckily, living in the state of Florida, my insurance did cover. And besides that, I actually didn't get to drive the car home from when we bought it. We drove my husband's 2011 Lotus Vora out to pick my car about 45 minutes west of us in Orlando. Um, but the seat rails had been removed from the car and the seat had been bolted directly into the tub. So I couldn't even push, push the clutch all the way in to drive the car home. So we brought the car home and immediately started taking it apart to see how bad the damage was and get to repairing it since I was waiting on the windshield and some weird titling issues anyway. It took us about three weeks to go in and just do the necessary fiberglass repairs on the front end. And we did discover that someone had repaired the front end with cardboard and what we refer to as kitty hair, which is essentially like a Bondo body filler type material that has shreds of fiberglass fiber in it. Um, it doesn't give you a ton of structural rigidity, but it gives you a little bit more than Bondo. However, for the giant chunk of the front end that was missing it proved to be a, a failing repair and that's why we ended up having to go in and fix it and i learned about the fiberglassing process and if you know anything about lotuses especially the elises you know that these things have the thinnest fiberglass humanly possible on a car that is part of what keeps the car so light they weigh less than 2,000 pounds so because of that uh, the fiberglass gets damaged really easily and at the time someone had backed into my husband going about five miles per hour in a parking lot and totaled the front end of his so we were kind of going through this rebuild process together and i was starting to get so antsy i just wanted to get the car back together so i could drive it i had driven his elise but being able to drive my dream car that i had purchased at 24 years old i was so excited so we just went ahead and decided to repaint the car black just the front end so that we didn't have to deal with paint on the rest of the car and Although the paint on the rest of the car wasn't great, it looked fine enough and I was really excited to get the car going. So I wanted to do something quick that I thought would be fun to change the color because a lot of our cars have fun colors. So I went with a kit from Dip Your Car. It is plum crazy purple and it has a ton of red flake in the dip clear coat over it. And we came up with this really fun rosy pink color that I loved on the car. I got to bring it out to car shows and meet other Lotus enthusiasts and the color was pretty polarizing, but I thought it was a lot of fun. And then in December of last year, my husband came to me and said, I think that it's time that we give your car the paint it deserves. And that ha is how we ended up here, halfway through a repaint. This is Porsche mint green. It is a heritage Porsche color. If you know me, I also own Porsches and I'm a big fan. So for me, this color looks great on the car. I was never just a big fan of the black, even though the cars look great in black. I wanted something that stands out. And my husband's Elise slash Exige rebuild that he's been working on is redone in BMW Snapper Rocks Blue. So the cars complement each other really well. 
and here we are. We are halfway through a repaint on this car and it has been a complete nightmare. So come check out what we have left to do before we can put this car back together. Because we had only taken the time to repair the immediate visible damage on the front end, I left the rear clam sitting and did not realize how bad the damage to the rear clam was. Now, the entire rear clam had settled onto the frame, cracking the entire inside of the tub and also settled onto the uh, rocker panels on the passenger and driver side. So all of this needed to be refiberglassed interior wise so that the car could sit properly. Now I'm not trying to build this into a show car. I'm not a show car person. And one of the benefits of having a branded title for me is that I never have to be concerned about how many miles I put on this car, taking it to the track or anything like that because it's already at the base of what this car's value could be. Uh, I think it might get a little cheaper if I'm able to put hundreds of thousands of miles on it, but my engine's not all that healthy, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Now, that being said, I have not had any problems with this. This is the stock 2ZZ engine in it, and I do have some issues with my VVTi kicking in. Um, but other than that, the engine itself has been relatively reliable. Um, I think because of how much I love this car, I will never sell it. And eventually I will get around to doing a case swap like Schmodified has in his car because that thing makes about 450 horsepower on pump gas and it's a lot of fun. But I am still new to attending track events and being a part of motorsports. So I think it's more important for me to learn my car as it is stock and master it on this platform before I go ahead and up any of the boost or any of the power on the car. So the front and rear clamps of the car have been painted. A lot of the accessories, the top, um, the front louvers, everything like that has been painted, but we didn't realize how extensive the damage was going to be to the rocker panels. So we came in and did this last. You can see all of the parts here in yellow where the fiberglass had to be pretty heavily repaired, even up here on the front. So now that this is done and it is completely cured and I'm going to be home for more than a week and it is not rainy and super humid because if you've ever done automotive paint, especially in a garage, you know how important having the correct humidity and temperature is. We can go ahead, finish paint prepping these portions and uh, get it painted. Well, while I have the car completely stripped down, it would be irresponsible of me not to do a full once or twice over of the car to make sure that everything is in really good condition now that I've taken the time to fully take it apart. And one major learning curve that I'm going to have is these wiring harnesses and pigtails. They are a complete disaster and there's a ton of exposed cables. We're going to have to go through the entire car, see where everything goes to, make sure none of the cables are damaged um, and definitely clean some of this up. Now, this isn't the only issue that I've had and I just wanna note, this is not how the car comes from Lotus. This car had been rebuilt at least twice before it came into my possession. And um, unfortunately, a much younger version of me is responsible for some of this wiring harness disaster. But along with this, I ordered some new wiring, some new harnesses. Um, we're going to go ahead and refurbish the headlights. And I ordered a new kit for all of the bolts because when I was taking the car apart, it, <laughs> It was missing a lot of bolts, which made the car feel very, very sketchy. Um, so I'm hoping, although the rebuild has taken a lot longer than I expected and I hoped, and I'm really itchy to get the car back on the road, once it is back on the road, it will be much more sturdy, much safer, and able to pass a track inspection. Once I have the car painted and back together, it's really important to me that I be able to make the car as safe as possible, especially because it is a street car here in the state of Florida where people constantly don't check their mirrors before they change lanes, and also that I'm able to pass a track inspection. So here is my universal harness bar. It comes with two four-point harnesses that I got from Saxon's Exige rebuild that he's currently working on. And this is the carbon fiber wing that I stole off of Saxon's Lamborghini Gallardo. It's pretty small and it looks really rough. Um, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to sand down the clear coat and some of the clear epoxy and we're going to refurbish it with some tinted epoxy. Along with this carbon part, I do have some carbon parts that were donated to me by my friend Fred who runs Rapid Lotus. They do need a little bit of work too, but I think it's going to make the car look really cool. And unlike Saxon's car, all of my car accents are woven carbon fiber and they contrast his, which are chopped carbon. And I think it'll give it a really cool dynamic look between the two of them. Now that a majority of the paint has sat and cured for at least 30 days, once the car is back together, the thing that I am most excited to do and what really makes your paint pop is we are going to go through clay bar the entire car, wet sand it and then give it a really beautiful ceramic coating. I think it's going to make the color pop because it is a flat color and hopefully with some gloss black wheels and the new carbon fiber accents, it is going to look amazing. I'm so excited to bring it out and share the car with people and get it on the track. 
Thank you so much for being here with me as I go through rebuild number two with this car. It's been a lot longer and a lot more difficult than I had anticipated, but being able to interact with people and share my experience online has made it a lot more pleasant and I feel like it's been a really big learning experience for me. I hope you guys have learned a thing or two or at least gotten the chance to laugh at me. So if you wanna see this car come back together and uh, hopefully on the track, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And either way, thank you guys so much for watching.